Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is a, a redo. Sorry about last week. For some reason, I got booted off the uh, webinar, uh, but making it up today. Uh, one thing we don't have the luxury is of time. Um, tomorrow is the last day uh, of the 14 day window that President Biden um, has set forth that businesses with less than 20 employees um, can apply exclusively for the Paycheck Protection Program and not compete with those larger businesses. So who can apply? Uh, sole proprietors, independent contractors, self-employed individuals. Um, and the sole proprietors, you can actually use your gross amount when you calculate your Paycheck Protection Program um, dollars. So it's trying to provide you with the max amount, but it can't be more than $100,000 annual salary. This also eliminates the exclusionary restriction on access uh, for small business owners with prior non-fraud felony convictions. It eliminates uh, restrictions uh, to small business owners who have struggled to make federal student loan payments, repayments, uh, as uh, default disqualifiers to participate in the Paycheck Protection Program. And it also allows access for non-citizens who are lawful U.S. residents by clarifying that they may use their individual taxpayer identification number to apply. Okay, I'm not sure if you uh, have the PowerPoint presentation. If you do, I do not see it. Here we go. So this is what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna go over the 2021 COVID-19 economic aid overview. There are some uh, loans and some grants. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the agenda. I'm gonna talk about some of the program details, the grants, and what additional assistance and resources are available. Next slide, please. Uh, back in December of last year, Congress reallocated the leftover money that was in the Paycheck Protection Program and created this new version. And in that, um, the result was about $275 billion in the current Paycheck Protection Program. Um, there's expanded uh, eligibility, uh, and uh, now we're focused on providing this economic aid to the hardest hit small businesses to include the underserved segments, which includes women, minorities, and vets. Next slide, please. These are the current loan and grant programs that the SBA and its Office of Disaster Assistance are managing. The first one is the Paycheck Protection Program. That is a loan, but if you uh, are eligible and you use 60% of the, the loan disbursement uh, for payroll purposes, anything that's approved to cover payroll purposes, then that loan can turn into a grant. You have to fill out a loan forgiveness application with your lender and providing that you can prove you use 60% of that disbursement, uh, paid your employees, paid yourself, use it for your mortgage insurance uh, interest, uh, your utilities and the cost of PPE, then that loan would become a forgivable grant. The debt relief uh, is a program. Uh, if you have an existing loan with the SBA lenders, that includes the 7A loans, the 504, the micro loans, um, automatically happens. You do not have to apply for it. The CARES Act allows the SBA to pay uh, your loan for six months, and letters have been sent to those affected. If you have questions, it's recommended you contact your lender. So this is yet another uh, program the federal government is has approved. Um, EIDL, if you see EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, uh, that straddles both the loan and the grant. So I'll talk about EIDL first. It is a, it's a 30-year, 3.75% uh, fixed loan. It is a federal loan. There is a uh, application you fill out online. I have seen a lot of uh, denial letters from folks who applied and it, the, the denials mostly hinge around uh, bad credit scores, uh, inability to repay. So if you know you have bad credit history, uh, this is going to be a difficult loan to get, but I encourage you to apply. Uh, the targeted idle advance 
um, last year when the idol uh, came out, there was a, an advance that was a grant and it basically came out to a thousand dollars per person. So if you were a small business owner and had 10 employees, you could apply for this grant. It's called the targeted idle advance. Uh, you would get that money deposited into your account and you could use it for whatever you wanted, did not have to repay it. So this targeted idle advance uh, was born out of the legislation that was approved in December with the leftover money from the original PPP. Those that applied for the idle advance last year uh, but did not get funding funded because the funding ran out, you are now in line or in queue to receive this. Our Office of Disaster Assistance is sending out emails. They have your information, your application still on file, and they're going to verify. They're going to ask for some additional documentation. We'll go in that in this brief later. The last thing I want to talk about that I can't talk too much about is the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. It is a true grant. Um, it is for the entertaining arts, um, for any information on all of these programs, and especially the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant. Please look at the bottom of the slide. Visit sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. Now, that Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, you have to have a SAM. Uh, go to sam.gov. You have to have a DUNS number. Uh, if you do not, uh, you need to get one, and it takes about two weeks. We're still out several weeks before this program launches, so there is time for you to visit the sba.gov forward slash coronavirus, coronavirus relief. Find out if you're eligible. This is a very complex and complicated grant. There's a lot of uh, venue operators who will not be eligible, um, please take a look at that website and see if you're eligible. Next slide, please. So the top takeaways here, um, last year when the Paycheck Protection Program uh, came out, uh, it was pretty straightforward and it did not really serve everybody. So if you think uh, that uh, the Paycheck Protection Program is good, but it could be better, please reach out to your local officials, your congressional members, uh, email, talk to their staff members, call them, send them a letter, let them know if this is good, how it could be better. And the only reason I say that is because these changes that I've seen in this program are a result, a direct result of folks, small business owners that reached out to the folks that can really change the law. And that's the congressionally elected officials. This uh, new program, the, this new iteration we're in, expands the eligibility and how the funds can be used. Uh, you can now select a covered period, like a covered period basically means how soon do you think you're gonna use this? And the target is 60% for, for payroll purposes. You can choose either eight or 24 weeks, gives you the flexibility. Um, this also has a second draw or think of a second bite at the apple and that's designed for the hardest hit small businesses there are i'll go over it in detail shortly but there are some eligible criteria uh, that you may or may not be uh, able to take advantage of this it allows for the deduction of expenses covered with forgiven ppp loan debt on federal taxes the office of disaster assistance is working on a simplified forgiveness form for all ppp loans up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, and that is not out yet. Some banks are not, some lending institutions do not have the forgiveness applications up on their uh, websites. I don't know when they're going to do it. Some do and some don't. Please uh, understand that this um, Paycheck Protection Program, the lenders uh, pretty much control the approvals. Uh, they uh, will process your forgiveness applications. They'll forward it to the SBA. The SBA provides funding. Uh, this also no longer subtracts the idle advance from the Paycheck Protection Loan Forgiveness amount. So if you applied for the Paycheck Protection Program the first draw last year, and uh, you might remember that if you did get the idle advance, they were deducting whatever that total was up to 10000 from your Paycheck Protection Program loan. That's no longer happening. If that happened to you, your lender will be giving you 
that uh, idle advance number back. It could be anywhere from $1,000 to $10,000, depending on how many employees you have. Next slide, please. So what is a first draw application? Uh, it is basically your first time at applying for the Paycheck Protection Program. Now, you might have applied for one before August 9th of last year. That's fine if you withdrew it. If you did withdraw that application, then you're, you can apply this go around and it's considered a first draw. Uh, so covered eligible expenses are expanded. Uh, so your mortgage uh, interest, your utilities, um, your, if you have to pay for uh, protective equipment for you or your employees, that's all included. Again, you can select anywhere between uh, eight or 24 weeks. My advice, uh, if your lender is accepting forgiveness applications, the moment you put 60% towards your loan, if it's within eight weeks, if you select eight weeks, apply for forgiveness. And that goes the same for 24 weeks. Once you reach that, if you selected the 24 weeks at, at the 22 week mark, if you use, you know you can prove at least 60%, apply for forgiveness and that whole loan will become a forgivable grant. Um, that certain borrowers may request an increase to their original paycheck protection loan amount. That's only if that loan has not been dispersed. For example, if you had your CPA or somebody else uh, file for you a paycheck protection program loan and they calculated your, your loan uh, wrong. For example, you, you might have had a PPP loan for a hundred thousand dollars and, and they put in 25,000. You can make a correction as long as you did not sign the loan documents from the lending institution. And that happens after the application, after you go online, submit your application, the lending institution will get it. If they need more information from you, they will tell you that they want more information. Once they're satisfied, they will forward that to the SBA. This go around to prevent fraud. The SBA is taking an additional about 48 hours for front end compliance checks. And that is to ensure that those that are applying are in fact legitimate uh, business entities in the United States. Once that's been satisfied, then the SBA will fund that loan that will deposit the money into the lending institution's account. And then the 10 day clock starts. That lending institution has 10 days for you to sign loan documents. Again, it is a loan until it is satisfied with at least 60% of the disbursement covering uh, payroll expenses. If there's a problem, that is a time to say, stop, I'm not signing this. Uh, I should get more money based on this. But once you sign that uh, loan document, there's nothing we can do. One of the new changes, you have to have been in business by February 15th, 2020. Sure, you could be a startup, but you had to have been opened by February 15th, 2020 to be considered eligible for this. This program will expire March 31st or until the funds run out. Um, and just like last time, uh, there was money left over, Congress allocated. So, so if you might, uh, at the bottom of these slides, there's the information, visit sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. I recommend if you're watching this, and I believe it's going to be taped, please write that down. Uh, that houses all of the information on all the grants and loan products the SBA has, also discusses the FAQs. For the first draw PPP, uh, again, from small businesses talking to their elected officials, there's uh, several new groups that are eligible. Housing cooperatives, several destination marketing organizations, for example, like ski lodges or um, boating community centers where there might be like, I don't know, like a uh, tent city where you just drive your boat up. Marketing organizations are now eligible. Certain nonprofits like chambers of commerce and some news organizations. Still, as uh, the last iteration, the following sole proprietors to include independent contractors, self-employed individuals, partnerships, corporations, LLCs. The deeper you go, there's more restrictions. Uh, I get questions all the time about, I've got a partner who's a foreign uh, business entity. Can they apply? 
uh, there's rules. So please go to coronavirus relief, sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. Arm yourself with information, learn as much as you can before you apply. And it will also tell you what you need, what documents are going to be requested. Uh, I can tell you right now, your tax documents, they're going to want to see those. Uh, still eligible, some nonprofits, uh, the vet organizations and tribal businesses, still eligible. If you've not applied by August 9th of last year, if you already applied for the first draw, you can apply for the first draw, but I'll go into the second draw momentarily. Next slide, please. What is the second draw? Well, if you have re previously received the Paycheck Protection Loan, you have less than 300 employees. And here's the key, uh, suffered a 25% reduction in gross receipts. What does that mean? That means in 2019, look at your gross receipts, compare that with 2020. 2020 has got to be 25% reduction total over 2019 to be eligible. If you suffered 24%, you're not eligible. So for most borrowers, the max loan amount of the second draw is 2.5 times your average monthly 2019 or 2020 payroll cost. And that is capped to $2 million. If you are in the food service sector, that's a NICS code 72 XXXX. If it starts with a 72, you're in the food services sector, you can use 3.5 as your monthly average uh, for your 2019 or 2020 payroll cost up to 2 million. So the calculation is on that website, but real quick, it's topped off at $100,000 per employee. Say you're a sole proprietor. That means there's one person in this business. And say you made more than $100,000. Your PPP loan is, this is how you calculate it. You take $100,000. And for sole proprietors, you can take your gross, not your net, your gross, divide that by 12 to come up with a monthly average. And then you multiply that by 2.5. If you are in the food services sector, NICS code 72, you take that monthly average, multiply it by 3.5. The more employees you have, the more your PPP is going to be. But both of these, uh, 2.5 or 3.5, it's topped off at $2 million. All of the lenders have automated their process. You can find your lender online. Uh, there's a radial. You just click it, apply for a Paycheck Protection Program. They've got the new forms for the second draw. Uh, you do not have to use the same lender you used if you previously received a Paycheck Protection Program. So you can have another lender. Next slide, please. So for the second draw, you must have previously received a first draw and your covered periods cannot overlap. And what does that mean? That means that if you're first, if you just got a first draw PPP a few months ago and you uh, elected 24 months, uh, 24 weeks, that period has got to cease before the second draw starts. Again, no more than 300 employees, and you've got to be able to prove 25% reduction in gross receipts between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. If you are a startup and you started in the last quarter of 2019, work with your lender, apply, work with your lender, and you've got to look at the comparable quarters. October, November, and December of 2019, look at your October, November, December of 2020. If you show 25% reduction, uh, you, you can apply. Next slide, please. Uh, the loan application process. The first step is find a paycheck protection lender. Okay, so I get a lot of calls. Um, a lot of folks applied for this program and they're, the lending institution they selected said they wanted a, a business account. The CARES Act makes no stipulation that you have to have a business account, but the banks, the lending institutions, credit unions, whoever is participating can set whatever rules they want for this Paycheck Protection Program. If you're not happy with a certain lender, find another one. But I caution you, do not apply at multiple locations. Uh, with if you, you can do that, but if you do apply and you're not happy with one, please contact that lending institution and have them withdraw that application. So many times I'm trying to help uh, applicants, 
with the SBA, there's a lot of red flags because they've applied at multiple locations. To find a lender on our website at sba.gov forward slash lender match or sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief, uh, there is a button that says lender match, and that shows you all of the participating banks, and there's about 6,000 nationwide. You, they, they do not have to be in the state to which you live. Uh, all they're going to do is process your application. My advice is try to find one that if you do have questions, uh, that you're confident that this lending institution will, one, take your phone call, or two, respond to your email. Once your application is complete with all supporting documentation, the lending institution forwards this completed application to the SBA. Again, the SBA, pre-compliance front-end checks, make sure that you're not a fraud. Um, not that you are, but there have been many that have been fraudulently applying for this. Uh, once it's cleared, it will get funded. Uh, the SBA issues a loan number. As in the past, loan numbers, the bank would give you that. SBA is now providing loan numbers once they have cleared pre-compliance checks and that money is returned to the lender who has 10 days to get that money to you. Please make sure that your account and your ABA routing number is correct. Take the time necessary to ensure that those are correct. Next slide, please. The loan terms. So Paycheck Protection Program, it is a loan unless it is forgiven. To be completely forgiven, you've got to use 60% of whatever that amount you get for your payroll purposes. If you do not, then it becomes a 1% five-year loan uh, and um, the interest rates accrue as soon as the loan is dispersed. Um, let's see. So once you think uh, you've used 60%, please double check, then contact your lender um, and then fill out that forgiveness application. Uh, if you do not, if you don't use 60%, then that loan in 10 months, uh, payment's going to be due. So say, for example, you got a $10,000 Paycheck Protection Program loan. You have to use $6,000 of that $10,000 for your payroll, i.e. pay yourself. Uh, pay your mortgage interest, pay your utilities, pay for your PPE. If you've spent $6,000 on that, fill out your application, the whole $10,000 will be forgiven. If you use $5,000 and you pay yourself or your interest, your mortgage interest or your utilities or your PPE, what happens to the remaining $5,000? Well, that $5,000 becomes a five-year 1% loan that's due starting 10 months from the day you got it. Next slide, please. Uh, again, uh, the borrowers have to apply through their lenders, um, and then the lenders will submit the forgiveness decisions to the SBA. The SBA has taken a long time to process these. They are queued up. The processing centers, I, it's just, I can't even imagine the avalanche of applications they're going through. But it's a slow, laborious process. It's working. Um, Idle advances, again, are no longer deducted from the PPP loan forgiveness payment. Expenses paid with the loan funds are federally tax deductible. So talk to your tax consultant uh, or go to the irs.gov webpage. You can get more information there. Again, a forgiveness, simplified forgiveness application. It's in the works. It's not out yet. And again, uh, PPP loans are not federally taxable income. So that's a good, uh, good to know. Next thing, next slide, please. I want to shift gears from the Paycheck Protection Program and talk about the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. This has been extended to this year, December 31st. Uh, you can use uh, this loan uh, as working capital, normal operating expenses such as Healthcare benefits, rent, utilities, fixed debt payments. It is a um, collateral loan, 3.75% uh, for businesses, 2.75 for the eligible nonprofits. It's a 30 year loan, uh, again, secured. So there is uh, some criteria. There, not everyone will be eligible for this. Um, you cannot use the idle and the Paycheck Protection Program to cover at the same time the same thing, i.e. your payroll. 
So strategy, if you do apply for both and get both, my advice is use your PPP first, get that um, forgiven, and then use your economic injury disaster loan as a bridge to, until we get out of this. Next slide, please. The targeted idle advance. Again, you cannot apply for this. You This is uh, retroactive to folks that applied for the grant or the advance last year. The funding ran out, but their applications are still in the system. The Office of Disaster Assistance is going through. They have started on February 2nd identifying folks. They're approving and um, just on a call today, uh, folks are getting money into their accounts. There's no email, there's no letter, there's nothing. Once you uh, get your email to apply, they're gonna ask for a couple forms. They're gonna wanna see the, the IRS, the Treasury 4506T form, basically lets the Office of Disaster Assistance take a look at your tax returns from the Treasury Department. Once that's completed, uh, once you hit submit, it takes about three weeks and then money, um, you will get a disbursement into your account that you provided with routing number. This could be anywhere from um, up to $10,000. Again, three weeks, no advance notice. Next slide, please. These are some of the items needed to verify eligibility and, and submit. So some folks, uh, they may have gotten married, uh, might have had a name change, might have had a, something change when you applied for the advance last year. Uh, please, when you get that uh, email saying you're invited, these are the things you need, go over with a fine tooth comb, make sure that your application is correct, make sure the EIN SSN is correct as it was in the initial idle application. If it needs to be changed, um, then change it. You need to have your gross receipts for 2019, 2020, and what's what you completed in 21. And again, that 4506T that allows uh, SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance to obtain your tax transcripts. Next slide, please. Uh, the application process. Look, you're going to get an email um, and you only get one once you hit submit. That's it. You only get one shot. Uh, just like the economic injury disaster loan, if you didn't like what you got, you could apply through PDC uh, for reconsideration. There is no reconsideration for this. So uh, this is pretty much the Office of Disasters Assistance. Uh, one shot for those folks that need this money. Again, once you hit submit, it's taken about three weeks. Uh, if you did receive an email invite, please take a look at the application questions. It's underlined in blue, targeted advance at sba.gov. That group is specifically designed to answer your questions. You will want to provide them with your idle number, your last name, your EIN, um, stuff like that. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this uh, the new program, it's a grant. This is the first time the SBA has done a grant. Most of the things we do are, are actual loans um, through banks and lending institutions. This is not open yet. Uh, and I don't think it's gonna be open by the end of this month. It's probably gonna be sometime in early April. But the first thing you need, if you don't have, uh, if you've not registered at sam.gov and received a DUNS number, and you're, if you think you're interested, if you're one of these eligible entities, uh, please go to the bottom of the screen. It says www.sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. Please go there. The eligible entities, it's the details uh, are outlined at that website. Um, there's a lot of stringent criteria that's got to be met. So live venue operators, theatrical producers, uh, museum operators, zoos, aquariums, talent reps, uh, please take a look at that website. If you do meet the criteria, go to sam.gov, register, get a DUNS number. You've got to be in operation by February 29th of last year. And another caveat, again, this is a total true grant. You cannot have applied for or received a PPP loan on or after December 27th, 2020. Okay. So if you applied for uh, you could you could have applied for it, but you could have withdrew it. You you're eligible. But if you applied for and received a PPP loan after December 27th, you're ineligible. 
Next slide, please. This is just a slide of all the programs. Uh, you, you might be eligible for more than one, uh, i.e. PPP and economic injury disaster loan. Um, again, at the bottom of the slide, www.sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. More information on that. But the Paycheck Protection Program, we have the first draw and the second draw. The Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, it's not out yet, but if you received a PPP loan prior to, uh, if you applied after the 27th, not eligible. Idle is open until December 31st of this year. You cannot use the PPP and Idle for the same purpose at the same time. Next slide, please. The backed loan debt relief, if you have an existing 7A, 504, or micro loan through any of the SBA backed loans through the lending institutions, this is automatically going to happen for you if you had a fully dispersed loan. I'm back. I am back. Okay, great. I'm just wrapping up. Uh, I was talking about the last, uh, I think it was close to the, the second to the last slide. Uh, yeah, so if you have an existing uh, loan with the SBA uh, debt relief, the SBA through the CARES Act is eligible to pay six months of your loan. So that's a good, good deal. Next slide, please. Takeaways. Again, we have loan programs and grant programs. Talked about the Paycheck Protection Program. You know, you can go to sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief, find a lender. Debt relief, if you have an existing loan that's automatic, six months, they'll pay your, your loans. The economic injury disaster loan is available until December 31st of this year. Targeted idle advance, if you applied for the advance last year before the funding ran out, you're in line to, re to receive that. And the shuttered venue operators grant, it's not out yet, but if you're a live um, entertainment operator, please go to sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief, get more information to see if you are in fact eligible. Next slide, please. This is uh, how you can reach us, sba.gov forward slash updates. That is updated frequently. Uh, if, you, if you follow Twitter, that's our handle at sba.gov. I know Matt Coleman, our regional communications director, uh, he does a fantastic job of getting information out. We will never comment on um, prospective legislative changes. If it's not uh, mandated by Congress, we won't discuss it. Nothing speculative. If you're interested in our office, you can reach us via email at newjersey.districtoffice at sba.gov or sbanj at sba.gov. We've got a small team in our office. We've got lending relations specialists who are working with the lenders uh, sometimes we, we deal with frantic small business owners. Please know that if you have issues and applied for the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, please work with your lending institution. That is your conduit to getting whatever issues resolved. Um, if your loan was dispersed and there's issues, then we can get you in touch with the serving, servicing centers. Your lender should be able to do that for you. Uh, economic injury disaster loan. Again, not everyone is going to be eligible for that. I get uh, hate email every day, uh, folks not eligible, uh, and it's okay. I don't. I mean, I'm getting tired of it, but I don't. I don't. I will keep forwarding those up to our point of contact. I want everyone to know that our resource partners are available, um, and you can call or email. That's all of our small business development centers, and they're associated with the school system in New Jersey. Uh, that's the SCORE volunteers. They're retired, not all retired, but most are retired uh, business people that have experience in whatever field you're in. Please Google them, uh, the Women's Business Centers. We've got one in Camden and one in Chatham. Uh, our resource partners are here to help you through this. Um, I wish there was more that the SBA district office could do, but unfortunately, there's a firewall between the SBA and the the folks that are running the economic injury disaster loans and the grants. Uh, and we are referring all applicants for PPP to work with their lenders. It's very important you get a lending institution that you feel comfortable that they will answer your emails or phone calls. All right, next slide, please. 
that's it. Um, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, Nari, if you have um, questions. We're yeah. Good. Thanks, John, for that presentation. We will go into some uh, question and answer portion right now. We do have a few frequently asked questions that were submitted beforehand, but we also sure. have many new participants in this meeting. Uh, so okay. if you have a live question you would like to ask, please first do so using the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. When you do so, please include your name and the town you are from along with your question, and we will call on you for that live Q&A portion. But before we get there, let's go into some FAQs. Uh, some of these might have been addressed already, but we want to reiterate them since they're on the top of everyone's minds. All right, John, for your first question, if you have a second draw application that is already being reviewed, how does the exclusive window affect the application? Are businesses with under 20 employees going to get priority? So it really, it's, if your application is, is being reviewed, it's, it's, it's NA basically. Um, the 14 day window is, was designed for those hardest hit. Um, so if you had, you're not competing with anyone that has more than 20 employees. If your application was submitted prior to uh, two weeks ago, um, Wednesday, uh, it's still gonna be processed. So if your lending institution has your application and they're processing it, processing it through the SBA, it's going to work. They're just not taking any new applications. And that started last Wednesday and that ends tomorrow. So if you have not applied, you have less than 20, you have another day. There's still money in this. And I, I'm hesitant to say how much money because no one really knows. I don't think it's going to run out. Um, last week, I, I was... I was different. I thought maybe it will run out, but March 31st, um, unless we get a huge wave of folks applying and we can, we see now that the average PPP loan size, it's getting smaller and smaller every day. Today it's $65,000 was the average. So it's really, uh, it's, it's helping those that need it most really small businesses. Great. Thanks, John. Mm -hmm. Again, if you have a question, that you would like uh, answered, please first ask using the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. We'll go into two more FAQs. John, can you please discuss the application process for nonprofits in particular? Sure. So are we talking about PPP or IDLE? PPP applications. Yeah. So PPP, um, you can, if you find a lender, you can Google, uh, you can go to the website, obviously, sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief, and it's going to spit out all of the lending institutions. But if you're, uh, if you know there's a bank down the road, we'll go to their website, see if they've got um, a button that says Paycheck Protection Program, click here. Some might say coronavirus relief. The application is all automated. Uh, you know, you just go box to box, put in your name, last name, where you live, street, uh, your EIN, your social. Um, you're going to want to upload your tax documents, i.e. your returns from last year or 2019, whatever you've got. Some folks have not even, um, you know, completed their 2020. So that might might have an issue there. But talk to your lending institution. Uh, so, again, the application is completely automated. Um, and then your lending institution, once they, once you hit submit, it's going to go to someone in their review department and they're going to either tell you, yes, uh, you're good, or they need additional documentation. Uh, so the sooner you can get that application submitted um, with virtually no errors, the quicker that the lending institution can get that forwarded to the SBA for funding. And again, due to uh, rampant fraudulent applications last year. You know, we've all seen the news in South Florida, some knucklehead took a PPP loan out and bought a Lamborghini. Uh, and just, it's just, this is rampant. So in order to prevent that, the SBA Office of Inspector General, they've said, hey, look, we need to take a look at this. So if you apply, you know, they're going to probably Google search that business. They're going to look at your tax returns. They're going to make sure that you are, in fact, who you are, what you are, what you say you are. Uh, this is a, a federal program. So, and then on that application, you're attesting that the application is true and correct with your knowledge. 
if you have someone else apply for you, I mean, really hesitant. To eat, if you're if you're a business owner, uh, if you're not the person applying, you've got to sign the loan documents. Make sure you're next to that person who's filling out this information for you. Again, this is automated, so I don't know if all these banks are going to have a print screen or print this application. Some do not, so you might want to take some screenshots. You might want to, you know, if you misspell your name or you have your social wrong, it's going to go to the SBA. It's going to get red flagged. I do want to talk about what's uh, problematic for a lot of banks and small business owners, these hold codes. There's hold codes, and, and each week there's something new that pops up. Um, and right now, hold code number 17, apparently that's a catch-all for a lot of issues for small business owners. I get emails, uh, we need help, we need help. Well, we the SBA will tell you, work with your lender. The lender will talk to the SBA processing center to try to resolve those whole codes. Some of the whole codes might uh, have been, um, who knows, uh, your EIN and social didn't match, or your first time you applied didn't match with um, information on the second application. So um, there's a lot of whole codes. They can be resolved. Uh, we're doing train, not we, but the processing centers are doing training with the lending institutions to help them understand that these whole codes can be resolved at the lender's level. So I hope that answered the question. Most of these are automated. Please understand that some of the lending institutions that popped up over the summer, uh, I'm not going to say any names, but if you've never heard of this bank and it popped up where a lender, understand that all these lending institutions get paid. Every time they approve a loan or every time a loan gets approved, they get a, a percentage. Um, so, um, you know, you want to be able to have a lender that if you have questions, you can reach out and um, get those questions answered. Understand also when you apply for forgiveness, when you've used 60 percent towards your uh, eligible payroll expenses, you're going to go through that same lending institution that got this funded for you for that application for forgiveness. We're dealing with some small business owners that went with some of these pop up online lending institutions. And as soon as they got their money, some of them sold your PPP loan on the secondary market. And then the applicant goes to file app, uh, forgiveness application only to be told, well, we don't handle that loan. Uh, so that's when the processing center's got to get involved with the original, uh, you know, lender to get this, you know, resolved. Hope that answered your question. Thanks, John. All right, we are going to get into a live Q&A portion. We have a few questions um, keyed up, but just a reminder, if you have one, please first ask your question using the chat feature at the bottom of your screen. And just a reminder, this call is being recorded for distribution purposes, so you will receive the full presentation um, after this event. All right, our first live questioner is Maggie G. Maggie, can you hear us? Yes. Hi, Maggie. Hello. Um, I have taken out two PPP loans for okay. our church. Uh, okay. The first one, I understood it to be not due until May of 2022. And then, uh, so I was interested in the uh, shorter period for the second one. Is that, is that true? Um, so the first one, um, and I don't know what the loan documents uh, say, but um, are you planning on using at least 60% for eligible payroll expenses that you want to be forgiven for both of these, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, have you, oh, let's talk about the first one. Do you, have you used 60%? Um, you obviously you had to because you wouldn't be eligible for the second one. Yes. So have you applied for forgiveness for the first one yet? No. Does your lending institution have a, a forgiveness application on its website? I'm not sure. Okay, either you or someone, please go to that lending institution's website, look and see, and if they do, then apply for forgiveness. Let me caution you, Maggie, not all lending institutions are, are, are doing the loan forgiveness at this time. Some of the bigger ones are hoping that some of the legislative changes that they're anticipating 
are going, but you know, that's going to catch up the nonprofits and the small business owners like, well, we're playing a weight game. My advice, if your lending institution is accepting loan forgiveness applications, apply now. Uh, just got off a call two days ago. Gentlemen applied for forgiveness back in October. We looked in the system. It's in the queue for forgiveness. The second loan, uh, have you gotten the second loan yet? Yes, just received it. Okay, and you selected eight or 24 weeks. I was not given a choice, uh, but I'm hoping for 24 weeks. Okay, please contact your lending institution, whoever that may be, um, if you can via email or phone's better. Uh, bring up your loan, uh, check the loan documents. It should state in there how many weeks you selected for your covered period. Okay, thank you. Uh, You're very welcome. One last question uh, on because it was such a small amount on the second loan, I did not provide documentation about the 25% drop in revenue. Uh, although I know we did have that, but because we're a nonprofit, there's no tax documents to that effect. It's just internal reports. Will that be sufficient? Yes. And now have you been funded for the second one yet? Yes. You're good then. It's already gone through the compliance checks and I would right. uh, double but, check that covered period, Maggie. Um, and my advice is submit the loan forgiveness applications as soon as you can. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks Maggie. for your question. Just a reminder, our office is here to help those who may have an issue with the Small Business Administration. If you do, please fill out our online casework form. I just dropped the link in our chat feature. It's malinowski.house.gov slash casework. Again, that's for any issue you have with a federal agency, and that's something including with the Small Business Administration. All right, our next live question comes from Brian. Brian, can you hear us? Do we have Brian on the line? All right, hopefully we can get him back. Let's go on to Carolyn. Carolyn N. That's N as in Nancy. Carolyn, can you hear us? Carolyn. All right, we'll move on to the next. We have Debbie. Debbie, can you hear us? I'll just keep going down the list. Debbie. All right, next up we have Liz. Liz, can you hear us? If you can hear her, check and make sure you're unmuted. Yeah, check and make sure you're unmuted. I couldn't find the mute button, but yes, I can. <laughs> okay, Liz, <laughs> go ahead and ask your question. Um, can you define seasonal business, please? Our lender, I you don't want to mention names, so I won't. Um, we believe we fit both criteria based on your website and the lender's instructions, but their reviewers don't seem to know what it is. And we've been back and forth several times about it. So if I can get a confirmation from you, that might help a little bit. Yeah, good question. New Jersey's got a lot of seasonal businesses. Think on the shore. I'm guessing you're somewhere, you know, on the shore, maybe, or maybe yeah. not. Um, we, we're an amusement company that we rent out game trailers to nonprofit organizations in New Jersey. Okay, so you can select the period, the covered period, uh, based on 2019, 2020. Um, have you, have, you've applied with this one lending institution, uh, still going back and forth with yes. them? Yes. How long have you been, been doing this dance? <laughs> I would say going on six weeks. Originally, we had the initial second draw loan application in, and they basically just said they canceled it on us because they had a glitch in the system or whatever. I was given three different reasons by three different employees the same day that um, why it was canceled. And they said, submit it again, which I did. And now we're going back and forth again. We're, I think we're at the final. I do have a supervisor working with me, but as of my last conversation with him this morning, there the reviewers still seem to be stuck on this and maybe it's resolved by now. I haven't heard from him since this morning. So I just, if you could clarify seasonal business, the 12 weeks we did, uh, mm -hmm. they submitted 12 weeks of payroll processor reports. 
And our understanding is seasonal based on seven, you don't operate more than seven months or at any six months, um, the income is 20 or 33 and a third percent, no more than that than the other. We fit both criteria. So if that's correct, then I would like to confirm that with them. Yeah, the lending institution should have the same information that's posted on the SBA website. Some are better than others. Is this a big lending institution or is it a, do you know them? Is it a pop-up? No, is it, it's, a, it's a large, we've been okay. there for 30 years. <laughs> Okay, um, um, so um, you can, are you, let me see, where's the chat? Yeah, it's mentioned in the chat. <laughs> You're, uh, let's see, Liz, if you want to drop me the name of that, I will also hear Send it, it to me, Nari. Send me her yeah, email if address, you, if she can, great. whatever issue she has, and then I'll have one of our lending uh, one of our LRSs take a look at this. Great. So Liz, if you wouldn't mind just dropping your uh, email in the chat feature, I will send it over to John. Okay, perfect. Nuri, thank you so much, John. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nuri, I just sent you my email. Yep, I see that right here. Okay. And if Liz, if you wouldn't mind just dropping that in the chat feature as well, I'll connect you guys. Okay. Thank you. And John, do you have time for one more question? I definitely do. Great. Let's take one more from Annette from Lambertville. Annette, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. All right. So I have two questions. Um, I think I know the answer to the first one. I think it's a very sad answer. We opened our restaurant in Lambertville, New Jersey. Um, our, our opening day was March 6th. Of course, we spent an entire year um, you know, spending money and, and preparing to open the restaurant, but we didn't actually open our doors until the 6th. I believe that that makes us ineligible for PPP. Is that correct? Unfortunately, you're right. Okay. All right. Um, so my other question is that I am a graphic designer. That um, that so I have this opportunity to to apply now as a as a sole proprietor, and um, but my bank doesn't. Um, is, is an electronic bank and is not doing PPP loans. So what are the options for people? And I'm sorry if you've covered this, I came in late. Um, no, what are the options fine. for folks who, who, whose banks just simply aren't offering this? Um, so you applied, but they're not processing it? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, they just, they simply don't offer the opportunity. Yeah, um, so I would recommend you find another lender. Um, so, so when you say that, what does that mean? Does that mean I have to open an account with another lender? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, most of them, some of these lenders uh, will say they, and they want you to have a business account. Mm -hmm. um, the CARES Act doesn't stipulate that. Um, and you can, you know, throw it back in their face saying, look, it doesn't say that, but, you know, maybe. Um, so our website, sba.gov forward slash mm -hmm. coronavirus relief. Mm -hmm. If you go there, uh, it'll say find a lender, lender match, click that. And it's going to spit out all the participating lending institutions. You can select one of those. Okay. Um, and, you know, you can, you know, sit there at the dinner table tonight and have a game. Name all the banks you guys can think of and spit out, <laughs> write down all their names. And then just look online and, you know, Google them and just go to them. And, and you know, pretty much all of them are playing the Paycheck Protection Program game. Right. Um, so as a sole proprietor, you can use your gross instead of your net. So mm -hmm. the, the cap again is $100,000. So if you made over that, your max PPP is 20,833, um, I believe. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, now find a lender, sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. It doesn't have to be in this area. I caution you, please do. I mean, some of these internet uh, lenders. I know uh, you just sort of terrified me with that um, earlier. I, well, when you said <laughs> I mean, I wish I could put you in touch with some people that are still doing the dance with them, trying to get questions answered. Right. So there's there's a lot of small banks in the state that are bending over backwards. I'm not. I can't tell you to go to this one specific bank. I I don't have preference. I can't tell you where to go. 
but sure. my advice is uh, check out our website, look at the lending uh, participating banks, um, okay. and then apply. Now, tomorrow is the deadline uh, for the sole props or businesses less than 20. Right. Uh, and, it, the, you know, if you have your tax returns, um, sure, you have the right. I've got all the information and I can, like yeah. you said, I could sit over this, sit over, sit on the, watch television and fill out forms. Yeah. I mean, it should take you a couple, you know, 30 minutes max and then hit submit. Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, it's all not right. that difficult, but there are some potholes uh, on this PPP highway. Okay. All right. Well, I'm grateful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. All right. We're going to take one last question. And this last one is going to be from Alan from Clark. Alan, can you hear us? Yes, I can. We can hear you too. Okay. My temple got the first PBP advance of 26,365. The second advance shows a 26,177 based on the 2019 annual salary from the 2019 W-2s. Are we still available for the second draw? How many PPP loans have you received? This is the only, the, we only one did we get. Only one? Um, yes. Do you, so did you say you had a 25% reduction between comparable yes. quarters? Yes, we do. You have less than 300 employees? Yes. Yeah, you should be eligible. And you've already used that first PPP. There's no um, over gap in the coverage. Now, could you please repeat that? So when you got your first Paycheck Protection Program, you've already used 60%? Yes. Then yes, I believe on what you just said, the three things, uh, litmus test is passed. You, I believe, are eligible for the second draw. Now, do we have to submit it by tomorrow night? No. Okay. And we're going to be available for the whole 26177 If that's what your PPP calculation is, then... Yes. Uh, I have the w, I'm using the W-2s from 2019. All right. What about 2020? I do not have that W-2s. You plan on using the same lending institution as you yes. the first time? Yes. Okay, uh, they might want to see your 2020s, uh, but that's definitely a discussion point between you and them. And then apply, second draw. They want additional information. They're going to reach out to you, Alan. Okay, good. You answered my question. So when All right. it, they, these, these are two, in effect, separate advances. They have not, they're not connected in any way um, other than informational. When you say advances, what do you mean by that? Well, the, this is an, an effect. It's an additional loan. Is what Basically, yeah, right, right, right. The way there are the two bank that I'm using calls it an advance. That's why I'm saying and calls it a draw. You're talking about the second draw? Yes, the second draw is this 26177. Okay, if that's the number you come up with, apply for the second draw PPP through whatever lending institution you you choose. Okay, so we Sub okay, continue. Submit the documentation that they're going to ask for. Uh, and then if you can, uh, reach out and ask them, have you satisfied their criteria prior to submitting to the SBA? If okay. the answer is yes, then you've got to count a few days because the SBA is going to take a look to make sure that this is all up and up. You're good to go. 48 hours later, nor that's about the average time. Then they should fund that lending institution. And then once that happens, they have 10 days to put that money into your account. So okay. once you hit submit, make sure you have some sort of line of communication with that lending institution. Okay. Okay, and we have to, from what I read also, is you have to give a financial statement, a quarterly financial statement, 
So I'm do it. I did it based on the second quarter, 2020 versus 2019. Okay. So what about the first, third, and four, fourth quarter? Did you have a 25 percent? Alan, the whole the the gross receipts, the whole year's got to be a 25 percent reduction. Oh, I was under the understanding it was just a quarter. Well, it's like quarters. So the first quarter of 2019, January, February, March. You look at that. If if you just say you you opened up at the last quarter of 2019, that's the only data point you have for 2019. You can't use January through September because you weren't in operation in this case. You look at the light quarter 2019. We were, and open, we were open for both full years. Okay, so if you look at your gross receipts for 2019, there's a number there. And then you look at the gross receipts for 2020. If the 2020 gross receipts are 25% less than what your gross receipts were in 2019, you're eligible. So that's for the whole year you're saying. Mm hmm. OK. Great. So one quarter, you might not have had 25. And then the second and third quarter, you might have had. Third, fourth quarter, you might have you might have coming out as long as the totality is at least 25 percent reduction in gross receipts, you're eligible. OK, That's, they want to help those businesses and not that your business hasn't been suffered economically, but they want to help. The program is designed to help those hit the hardest. OK. So Great. I'm going to you, you're telling me I need the 20, 2019 versus the 2020. Right. You need to prove that year 2020, you've suffered 25 percent gross receipts. OK. Versus your 2019. So please take a look. OK. And the application is not due to the end of the month. Um, so the uh, legislatively, yes, mandates uh, March 31st. That's the end of the period that we can accept applications or until the money runs out. So my advice, today's the 8th. Uh, if you find out that you're eligible, apply as soon as you know you're eligible. Okay. Great. Thank okay. you so much, Alan. Okay, you answered my question. Thank you. Good luck, Alan. Thank you. Thanks, John. And thank you to all of our guests for participating during this call. We are nearing the end, so I'm going to turn it over to John for some closing remarks. Just a reminder that we will send out a recording of this conversation to everyone who RSVP'd. So you will be receiving all of this information into your inbox after this call. All right, and John, I will turn it over to you for some closing remarks. All right, I want to thank um, Congressman Malinowski's office, his staff, Nari, you did a wonderful job facilitating this. Listen, um, to make change to any of these programs, it starts with talking to your elected officials. And uh, this group does a really good job of, of getting their voice out and, and, and getting their concerns at least addressed. Because the next change, we don't know what's going to happen. Today, I talked about PPP, the idle, the targeted idle advance, and the shuttered venue operators grant. All information on those programs, those loans and grants can be found at www.sba.gov forward slash coronavirus relief. I encourage everyone to take a look at that. Uh, I appreciate the questions. I will respond to Liz uh, at the email she provided. Um, and if you have questions, please send those to Nari. She'll get those to me. Um, please use your lenders uh, for questions for your applications uh, and the complicated questions. I guess we can we'll try to resolve. We've not really had a lot of success with helping out, uh, but we will do what we can. Light is at the end of the tunnel. Uh, so everyone keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe. And if there's something I can do for you, please reach out to Nari. She knows how to reach and get me.